Hi guys, it's Lindsay. Um, I have an apology, first of all. I failed at my Christmas DIY videos. So I'm very sorry about that. Um, hopefully next year I'll get a little bit of the game. Wasn't a good choice for me. To make up for it, I'm gonna try and do a DIY video a month so that we can get a few different things. I actually have some videos that we made that I never posted. So I will have to get those together for you soon. Um, so, you know, I'm a mommy. So most of the time, uh, my life is crazy and trying to be a mommy, be in ministry, be um, teaching Bible study, all these things, my life is crazy. And I know that you guys know what it's like for your life to be crazy because you guys go to school and you guys are doing ministries or you guys are in sports and there's always something going on. So today I really was blessed because my son took an early nap and he slept for like four hours. So I had like four hours of nothing and I could have cleaned, I could have done all kinds of things, but instead I spent some time in my Bible and I haven't done that for that kind of time in a long time. So I just want to talk to you. Today our study is called... I'm just too busy to a V. The theme today is I'm just too busy and I'm just too busy for what? Most of the time our biggest thing is we're just too busy to read the Bible. We're just too busy to get into the Word. We don't have time to read. It takes too long. I just don't have time. The reality is, is that God stands outside of time. He doesn't live on a 24-hour schedule seven days a week like we do. He doesn't do that. We can only handle a 24-hour period um, for the day because that's as much as our brains can handle. But God is the beginning, he's the middle, and he's the end. He knows all of time. I have girls come to me constantly feeling anxious, stressed, angry, frustrated, fearful, all these things. Evaluate your life. We need to stop and look. What is causing us to feel this way? Because those feelings are not of God. So what is causing that? What are our priorities in our life? And are we keeping our priorities straight? When we fill our lives with things that are temporary or, or they're not eternal, we begin to have negative feelings like anxiety, stress, you know, all fears, ugly friends. We end up having those feelings in our lives. And you know, sometimes we have to focus. We have to focus on school. Sometimes you have a job, you have to focus on your job. As a mom, I have to focus on my son and my family and my chores and all the things I have to do. Um, but I have to remember to have an internal mindset. I have to remember, you have to remember to have an eternal mindset. We need to see what is of eternal value. We need to look at um, what is most important. And that thing that's most important is important. Bleh. That thing that is most important is spending time with God, building a relationship with the Lord. That is the most important thing that we can do with our time. This is something that I seriously struggle with every day. I love to sleep. I do. I enjoy sleeping. But with a baby, you don't sleep very much. And as a teenager, your guys' lives are crazy. You don't sleep very much. Some of you sleep a lot. Some of you don't. But I'm just saying. My life is chaotic. And I know some of your lives, I know some of your lives are extremely chaotic. When my life gets busy, I put my devotional life on the back burner. It's not important because it takes so much time and I have so much to do on my to-do list. It's crazy. When I don't get to spend time with God, I get, I get angry. I get impatient. I'm, I'm pretty snappy when it comes to like things. I get a little antsy. Um, I don't tend to look at what other people are going through or like try to give them a benefit of the doubt. I don't do that. And I don't act in the spirit. I don't. When I'm not in the word, I don't know how to act in the spirit. It's impossible. Um, and I know that I'm not the only one that suffers with this because I work with teenagers all the time and I know for a fact that when you're not in the Word, you suffer from all of these crazy things too. It's not just me. Um, the devil will try to distract you. He will try to fill your life with so many things to do that you get distracted from your life and your devotional life with the Lord. So then you draw away from God because you have so many things to do and your life is so stressful that you can't focus on the most important thing in your life. 
there was this one teacher who was really cool. Um, when my best friend Jessica went to Bible college, there was a teacher that had a little boy, and he kept doing all these naughty things. He was being naughty, getting into things, breaking things, being crazy. And she was like, honey, why are you being so naughty? Jesus would be so sad because you're being so naughty. And he said, well, mom, it's really hard to hear his quiet little voice when the world is screaming at me. And it's reality. It's what it is. It's exactly what our life is. Satan fills our lives with so many loud, chaotic things that we miss out on that sweet, small voice that God has. It's so crazy to me and pretty sad that, like, our lives are full of so much crap. Excuse my language. So much stuff. So much junk. It's just full of all these things that are not important. They have no internal value. Um... Like things like social media, you know, of course, Facebook, Instagram, everybody's got one. Netflix is a big offender. Ooh, Hulu, totally my problem. Um, all these things can consume us, completely consume all of our extra time, all of our time, not even extra time, all of our time, if we let it. Those things, and you know what, those things aren't bad. It's not bad to watch movies. It's not bad to watch TV. It's not bad to listen to music. It's not bad to do those things but when those things become more important to you than spending time with the lord they become idols and that sucks like bad you know that's exactly what satan wants he wants it to be that um we get lost in this life this life that we're living right now we we get too busy very too busy you see it too busy okay too busy and we lose ourselves we need to put God first and the rest will follow. So many times people tell me how they're so anxious and there's so many of these things and all these things. And I ask them, are you in the word? Are you listening to the, are you listening to God? Are you, are you spending time listening to worship music? Are you spending time with him? And usually they go, oh no. So, um, ah. if you want to be a strong Christian, if you want to be a strong woman of faith, you have to work for it. You have to get off your butt. You gotta pick up your Bible, you gotta open it, and then you gotta read it. Mine's upside down. Okay. You gotta read it. You gotta know what it says. Even if you only get a little bit, a little bit during the day, it will seriously do things for your walk, for your life, for everything. Even if you just get up in the morning and you spend five minutes praying, you read a few scriptures, I read one proverb a day, um, and then I try to do a little extra when I can you know, get it in. But if you listen to worship music while you're putting on your makeup or you're brushing your hair or you're getting dressed and you're worshiping the Lord and you're genuinely spending time with God, those things will deeply affect your life. You need to fill your mind, your eternal mindset with the Lord. That's what you need to do. So we're going to read Psalms chapter 24. I'm going to read you a big chunk of it. It's actually really short. It's a very little psalm. It's pretty cute. So this, okay, Psalm chapter 24, this is the NLT version. It's like my favorite. Um, it says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, and the world and all of its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and a right relationship with God, their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship you in, the, in your presence, O God of Jacob. Open up ancient gates. Open up ancient doors and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, the strong and mighty, the Lord, the invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the King of glory. The earth belongs to the Lord and everything in it. Every person you talk to, every day that you live, every breath that you take, all these things belong to the Lord. Everything I do is for the Lord. It should be. I should be living a life for Christ. Everything I do is his. So why am I anxious? Why am I stressed? Why am I having a hard time? Because I'm trying to do it in my own will, in my own flesh, in my own self. This verse brings peace to my heart because it lets me know that he is in control of all things. All things. Not just some of the things, not just part of the things. He is in control of all things. When life gets overwhelming, okay, when life gets overwhelming, 
I tend to uh, become an emotional basket case. I'm already emotional as it is, but when I get overwhelmed, it's like way worse. I get my to-do list and I have it all written down of all the things that I need to do and all the things that have to get done by a certain time. And if I don't complete them, I'm a hot wreck. And usually I don't even rest until I've completed them all. So the holidays just passed. I didn't sleep very much. Totally why I didn't get to my DIY videos. You know, life gets crazy. Things get in the way. Just how life is. And when I get stressed, I freak. I legitimately freak out and I have an issue. And then I, I'm, I'm short with my kids. I don't spend time with people I love because I'm in my hermit hole trying to get my act together. Um, I'm short with my husband, which is really bad. Um, there's all kinds of things. My devotional life takes the back burner, okay? Just like everything else. But this verse really shows us that, that God is our creator. He created us specifically. He created us special. He made us to be somebody amazing. He created us in a way to complete a task, to, to have a purpose. And our purpose is to worship God. And one of the greatest ways to worship the Lord is by reading his word, by spending time with him, by praying with him. It's what we have to do. Nothing, nothing, hear me, nothing is possible outside of God. Nothing can happen outside of God's will. Nothing you do can happen outside of God's will. Um, over in verse 4, let me read it to you again. It says, Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies, they are the ones that will stand in the holy place. So we cannot have idols, you guys. Like, we can't. And you know what? And sometimes we have idols in our life that we don't even realize. Like, for a long time, I was really addicted to watching Bones on Netflix, I would usually binge. I would watch like show after show after show after show after show. And my husband would come home and nothing would be clean. I wouldn't have read my Bible that day. I'd be sitting in my pajamas, like wasting my life. I am a Hulu Netflix binger. I know other people are that too. Everybody does it. I'm not the only one. Um, but sometimes things become idols in our life that we don't even realize. And Things like social media, music, friends, boyfriends, um, food, any of those things can totally be idols in our life. Anything that comes before Christ will be an idol. Anything and everything that comes before Christ will be an idol. Okay? So for like a long time, example, good example. Um, I'm really into Bible journaling. I love to paint in my Bible. I love to go outside the lines, you know, do kinds of crazy stuff. Well, for a long period of time, I was so obsessed with what I was painting that I stopped reading. And the whole idea of Bible journaling is to be able to worship God through the word in art. And I wasn't even reading what I was painting. I was just finding a verse on Instagram that I liked and I would go, oh, this is cool. And I'd, I wouldn't even get out of the Bible. I'd get off Instagram. It was like really bad, like really bad. So it became an idol to me and I had to put it away for a long time. And um, after about a, like, I don't know, a while, I totally gave it back to God and now it's worship and you know what's funny is it's just random but um my artwork that happened before when my Bible was an idol to me versus now is really bad I've painted over like three of them because I'm like this because it's not real worship um things can appear really good and maybe they are really good but because they become the most important thing in our life or we put them ahead of everybody else or if it's a person even like if we put them ahead of everybody else above our time that we spend with godly people or going to church or we don't sleep because we're talking to them on the phone all night or whatever or if I'm constantly playing video games or whatever it could be if that's taking my time away from the time that I'm spending with the Lord then it is an idol and it is against God and you have to get it out you have to separate it. Like, I put my Bible away. I had to separate it and read out of a different Bible because it was separating me from God. We need to, when we're feeling that way, when we're feeling like we're far from the Lord and we don't have time, we really need to analyze our life. Look at it. Look at your priorities. Look at what you have to do and go, okay, what can I cut out? What can I separate? What, what isn't necessary? Limit yourself. Tell yourself, I'm only going to watch two episodes of this show and then I'm turning it off. No matter how hard it is, do it. Tell yourself, I'm only going to be on Facebook for an hour and then I'm turning it off. And turn it off. Because you know what, sometimes I'll be sitting there scrolling and then all of a sudden I'm like, why is it two in the morning? 
what am I doing? Nothing. I don't even remember what I looked at. So what's the point? Serious. When I'm quick to anger, when I'm quick to judge, when I'm quick to become fearful in a situation, I when I have worldly actions um, and they're very noticeable, I know that it's because I'm not spending enough time with the Lord. And it's about time for me to get my act together and shove those things back and get rid of them and put the Bible and my my quality time with the Lord first and foremost. And that happens way too often. Even to me, even to pastors, even pastors' wives, sometimes that stuff happens and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to get my act together and you have to change the way you work. Sometimes when my life gets crazy, I'll hear the Holy Spirit and I'll be like, what are you doing? Lindsay, what? are you doing I'm right here you're not asking me you're not talking to me you're not listening to me like I know best <clears throat> and I'll be like oh sorry you know it's it just reality like it happens to all of us it's like a constant battle every day and you'll never win you'll just battle every day and you know what you'll get tired it'll happen but then you'll have those days where man do you God has given you so much energy and he's given you so much strength and you do good for a really long time and those are the best times. <clears throat> we need to have an eternity mindset. We need to think of like what will be important in eternity. If God came back today, would I be happy with where I am? Me and Zach talked about that, me and my husband, the other day and I said, is it bad that I would be happy with my legacy right now? Of course I want my legacy to be better. But would, it be, would I be happy with my legacy right now? And yes, I would be because the girls in my youth group are my legacy. And I can barely say it without sobbing, but they are my legacy. They are um, the ones I poured my everything into. And, and if I died today, I would say I'm proud because I'm proud of them and who they become and who they're becoming. And, and um, they all are hot wreck. But so is their mama. I'm a hot wreck too. And it's allowed. <laughs> I know that they that you guys need this too. Like this isn't just about just random people. It's my kids and my girls and, and, and me and everybody. Everybody struggles with not having enough time in our life to spend time with the Lord. If God came back today, like I said before, would I be, what would I be doing? Like if he came back right now, what would you be doing? Um, watch my video. <laughs> um me making a video but my like is what I'm doing have eternal value um will I be caught worshiping the Lord will I be caught uh reading his word will I be caught serving him or will I be doing something in my own self in my own flesh something that's just for me that I want is that what I'll be caught doing what will you be doing when he comes back will he say well done to you what will he do are you happy with what will happen I have a question for you answer honestly if you're by yourself you can answer out loud it's helpful um, do you have an internal mindset are you thinking about what will be in eternity what God will remember about you do you do you have an internal mindset if you don't why why don't you have an internal mindset you know what you should get one. Everybody needs one. So get one. Spend time with the Lord. Try to get to know him more every single day. Grab onto it. Hold on to it. And like strive for it. The gospel is real. It's active. It's strong. It's active. It's together. It's it's living. It's it will quench your thirst. I know sometimes people struggle with reading it because they don't understand it, they don't get it. But the thing is, is that a lot of people think that I'm reading this and it's stories of yesterday and it's not. This is truth of today. There are things in here that will speak to you today, right now. Just like we read in the Psalms, talking about who is going to stand before the Lord. That answers to us right now. The pure of heart will stand before God. I want you to think about the word. Okay, think about the word and think like this. When you're hungry, you haven't eaten in like two hours, that's me, starving to death. I feel like I'm starving. My stomach is going to eat itself. Like I'm hungry. What do you do? You strive to feed it. You feed the hunger. If your heart is feeling anxious or crabby or stressed or sad or depressed or any of those things, it's asking for food. Your spirit needs food. Feed it the gospel. 
Feed it with good things. Give it fellowship. Give it, nurture it. Nurture it with things that are of God. And then you will, you will begin to feed that hunger and you won't be feeling it all the time anymore. Your spirit gets hungry. Just like my stomach. Feed it. Feed it the word, people. Feed it. It will make your spirit healthy. It will make you feel different. Another thing that's been really hitting my heart is I saw this shirt the other day at Ross. And it had like two arrows going like this. And it said, think of who you want to be and be it. The thing that really stuck to me about this whole study was that so many times we think, oh, I want to be this type of a Christian, this type of woman of God, this type of person. But right now I can't be that because of all this stuff going on. And once I get my act together, then I'll try really hard to be that. No, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop making excuses. All you're doing is making excuses. All I'm doing is making excuses. I need to say, who do I want to be right now? Who do I want to be? What kind of Christian do I want to be? What kind of mom do I want to be? What kind of wife do I want to be? What kind of wife do you want to be one day for your husband? What kind of mom do you want to be? What kind of Christian do you want to be? What kind of woman do you want to be? And just be it. And do whatever it takes to be it. Don't wait. Because what if God comes back tomorrow and you wasted time? I know that's harder said, harder to say than to do, I get it. Or harder to do than to say, yeah. But it will honestly change your life. Focus on the Lord. Give everything you can to God. Sacrifice things. Give them to Him. Stop making excuses. Stop saying, I don't have time. Make time. It will change you. And, and you know what? No one can do it for you. You're the only one. And God loves you so much that He created you in a special way. He made you the way He did for a reason. Um... You're made in the image of God. How much cooler is that? Like, how cool is that? That you are made in the image of God. God made you a certain way so that you would be like him. Like, he's so in love with you that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for you. So that you could spend eternity in heaven with him. Yeah. And you don't think that, like, you're good enough right now? No. Come on. God made you. You are already ready to go. He's already forgiven you. He's already said, this is the plan. And he already knows. So he just wants to love on you. So let him. Let God love on you. Get in the word. Read. Fellowship with other Christians. Listen to worship music. Consume yourself in Christ. And let go of all these things that are not eternal. Get rid of them. They're not necessary. Spend time with the Lord. He loves you. And you know what? I love you. And that's why I do this stuff. This is why I I study like crazy. Not only to get closer to the Lord, but he uses those things to get you guys closer. To give you guys things. That's Baymax. My son is playing with his Baymax. Sorry. Ignore him. Um, you need to focus on the Lord. Give your life to him. Try it. Like, take like a week. Especially a lot of you are on Christmas break right now, so it's a good opportunity. For the rest of the week, wake up every day and spend 15 minutes with the Lord. Or, yeah, do that. Um, listen to worship music for the rest of the week. Only worship music, or only Christian music, only things that are uplifting for a week. Try it. Tell me what happens. Post in the comments. Tell me. How was your attitude this week? How was your... How are your emotions this week? Um, stuff like that. Try it. Where are your priorities at? Um, yeah, so that's the end. I will see you on the next one. I hope we get some DIY videos together pretty quick for you. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. And um, I created a little um, hashtag -y thing. It's called Beautifully Brave Bible Studies. That's what we're going to do. Um, and that's the end. So, um, I have a little verse for you. We're going to do like, I'm going to try and do like a verse for every Bible study for you to remember. Because one of the things you should do is write the words of God on your heart. So memorizing them is really good because then they're on your tip of your tongue when you're getting ready to go to when you need it, when you need to share it with somebody. So we're going to go to Psalm chapter 46. The ESV version on this one. It says, God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. 
God will help her when morning dawns. God is with you. He loves you. And he cares about you. So fight for your relationship with the Lord. Work hard. Fight for it.